So just put out a clip on UWorld versus Amboss in 2023 a few moments ago, and then within a few minutes, we've got Truth Teller here on YouTube asking in one of the comments, yes, please, a video on how to use Amboss now. Now, look, those of you asking how to go through UWorld, how to go through Amboss, okay, in terms of how many questions per day, time versus tutor, subject specific versus random, give you a very fucking clean and excellent answer here. So before we start, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give me a like. Really appreciate it. If I'm on Instagram, element underscore medical, and mutual man underscore medical. Links down below for me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel down below. Let's start the clip. So how to go through QBank, okay? And as far as Amboss versus UWorld, how to do your general step two, step one prep, just check out my prior clips, okay? But in terms of actually going through QBank, first I'll just discuss timed versus tutor. I prefer students going through tutor mode because that is how you are going to remember things best. If you do things in timed mode, that is overrated in my view. You could literally do untimed all the way up until your exam, sit the exam, be perfectly fine. Unless a student comes to me specifically explicating that he or she has had a problem with pacing in the past, I always do tutor mode for students, okay? So, or if a student's neurotic about, you know, really being able to uh, do things on time, fine. We could try time mode, but I like tutor mode. In tutor mode, you do the question, then the answer. Question, then the answer. So that oscillation of having the active engagement reading the question, and then instantaneously, you have the shock value as far as, oh, like, didn't fucking realize why this was the answer. That induces retention, okay? Shock value. In addition, there's less monotony, that oscillatory process of having to go through 40 questions in a row. Then now you're going to, it's very boring, very monotonously, read all those explanations. So the combination of shock value as well as active versus more passive, uh, answering a question, reading, answer a question, reading, having that shock value there, I prefer tutor mode for students, okay? And untimed, okay? Now, subject specific versus random. I prefer students do random mode. And this is also because it will assist with macro retention. If you get a question wrong on rheumatic fever today and you're doing all the cardio questions subject specific at the moment, and then tomorrow you get that question correct, sim a similar one on rheumatic fever, that means less than if you're doing things in random mode and three weeks from now you see that similar question, you get it wrong, that's going to create shock value because you say, fuck, I remember, like I've read that, I should have known that. That's how you remember things, is being annoyed by not getting something right when you should have, okay? So seeing topics in, in sporadic intervals, that assists with macro retention for your USMLE. Now look, obviously there can be a time and place for doing subject specific. Students who, e.g., have got a GI quiz in school in two weeks, okay, then we can do subject specific in some circumstances. But we talk about in general for most students watching this clip, and we talk about how to maximize your performance on the USMLE, how do you remember most things in the macro? I like random mode for that reason, okay? And if, as you're going through QBank in random mode, if you feel that you suck jack fucking shit in a particular subject, let's say immuno, and you say, no, but how am I gonna know that subject better than if I'm not doing it subject specific? I wanna pack the punch. My response is, well, you've got my high yield immuno PDF, and you've got my immuno playlist here on the YouTube, my MCQs, okay? So students can go through a certain playlist that I have, just go into my playlist, you see biochem, peds, whatever it is, study for step one, step two, respectively, as an example, and then you've got the PDF in that corresponding subject. And that can be your quote-unquote subject-specific study while you're going through QBank and random mode. If you're studying for 2 count rotations, obviously you're going to be doing things subject-specific anyway, like surgery, IM, etc. But for most students, I prefer the random mode. Now, how many questions per day? Never less than 40, never more than 80, okay? So if the student comes to me, I will make that general assessment. There's many variables to consider, okay? But 
minimum 40, maximum 80. If students are able to get through lots of questions, you watching this clip, you say, well, I can do 80, no problem. I can probably get up to 120. I don't want you going to 120. Okay, so it's not just about raw question load. Some students tend not to read as much when they get to a higher question load, but I want you switching over. It's about using a multitude of strategies here. So yeah, you fulfill your 80, but then after you're able to get through that, I want you doing more PDF reading or going through some more of my questions here on the YouTube, okay? I've made prior clips talking about how the Tetrad is gonna be QBank, number one, PDFs, number two, number three, my MCQs here on the YouTube, colloquially audio QBank, and number four, the NBME exams when you get there. So it's not a crisis as to if you personally want to do 40 versus 80 per day, I will consider when a student is going to sit the exam, how I want to fit in the NBMEs toward the end. Okay, having enough time, if I feel the student, you know, is really uh, needs remediation in a certain subject, I might have him or her do more PDF reading. I say, no, definitely for you, 40 questions per day only. And then we're going to have you do more PDF reading, actually. Or we're going to have you knock out some of the YouTube playlists as your second phase of the day. You do your questions the first phase of the day, you have lunch. Second phase can be PDFs and YouTube MCQs. But I can titrate that up to 80 depending on the student. So that's your short clip for how to go through QBank. Obviously, could probably answer 12 different questions as far as nuances of QBank. Uh, rather than getting angry that I didn't answer every little question, just drop your comments below, okay? And then I'll make clips such as this. Uh, and address your questions. You know the deal. I'm just here to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.